Hey guys, I see bringing you another video. Now today's video is something a bit different, I guess a bit special. It is a Q&A video, but it's not just that, it's the New Year's Q&A video. So happy 2017, hopefully you'll have a, a great year. Um, but today's video, basically every single year that I've done YouTube, I've done like a New Year's thing that I just talk about like how was my year previously and how is how am I expecting or what do I want from the next year. And this is no different, so the first five to ten minutes of this video is going to do that. And then we're going to get into the Q&A and it's probably going to be quite a long one. It's going to be a pretty relaxed video. There's not going to be any editing. It's just going to be smooth and just talking about stuff uh, that people have questions about. And I will say uh, one person who I say I answer everybody's question. I will jumble up all the questions that I asked. And then one person from all the questions that I asked will win some riot points. Uh, that has already been sorted out from... Uh, the Climb to Master episode that I did a few days ago. That's where all the questions have come from. So just quickly to talk about New Year's resolutions and how was 2016 and what am I looking forward to 2017. So every single year, as I mentioned, I do the video. So last night I watched my 2015 to 2016 video and I was like, okay, what was I expecting for myself in 2016 and how did my 2015 go? And generally that video, it was upbeat. It was like, yeah, it was a good year for me in 2015. And something that I said in that video, I kind of forgot about, but it's kind of true. Every single year, I want my life to get slightly better. I want the, the, the year that I'm going into to be better than the last. And I can actually say, and it's nice to say, that is true once again. So 2015 was the best year of my life, and then now 2016 was the best year of my life. The reason for it is that I had a few goals for myself. You know, resolutions, again, is something that I find useful to keep myself on track. And just to go over a couple of these, and we can kind of tick them off if, if it went well. So the first one was get laser eye surgery. Uh, tick, we did that not not actually that re uh, not long ago. So we got right laser eye surgery. Second one was get a first in university, which is actually the highest grade you can possibly get. Tick, I got the highest grade you possibly can get. Next one was to get a hundred thousand subscribers on YouTube. Tick, it's another one that we did. And then the 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 final really big one I didn't do. And this is, again, the slight disappointment. <clears throat> again, you set so many goals for yourself. Some people only set one goal for themselves. I set, like, four, and I, I've done three. The one that I did not do was get back in shape. And it's disappointing, and I, I did lose weight over the year, and um, I'm not sad about it. You know, it is something that I can now look to do, and I will be talking about that in a minute. Um, but doing three out of four, and these are not small goals. They're pretty big ones. Life-changing goals, like the laser eye surgery or getting a first in university, they're big, and they're, they're, they're meaningful goals. And doing three out of four is... I'm really happy. Like, that's really good. Um, so, you yeah, know, thank you for that, uh, especially when it comes to getting the 100,000 subs. That was a big one, and we hit that a couple months ago, so that's also really, really cool. So, that's 2016. We had a great 2016. Um, it was fun. And what now what am I looking forward to 2017? Um... So again, 2017, I want it to be the best year of my life. That will become a phrase in this video if I do this once a year, because that's kind of how I want to live my life. I always want to be moving up the ladder, not down the ladder. And um, goals for 2017 generally, well, the biggest one, I'll say I'm pretty content with how my YouTube channel is. And of course, I want it to keep growing and going up in views. That, that's just, you know, that's obvious to be said. But the biggest goal for 2017 is my weight. It is actually a personal goal, not a career goal, if you will. It is to get back on track with that, which hopefully is going to be starting pretty soon. In the next week or so, I launched the idea earlier in Climb to Master. I've got a subreddit now. I'm going to be using it actively. And every single week, there is going to be a new thread with like get fit with huzzy or something like that and i'm going to be actively getting involved trying to lose weight and hope hopefully getting you guys involved that we can lose weight together and encourage people because you know it, it's always better to be in shape than not and uh, that's something that's going to be happening i'm going to be doing personal training sessions i'm going to ring up a place that's local to me that's like a very private place that every single gym session you do you actually have a personal training session as well you just don't go by yourself um so we, we, i'm gonna see how that goes i'm you know i'm not sure the diet if i'm gonna do a diet at all because diets they're really hard to stick to and they're the biggest reason that i've always given up with losing weight you know i like i lost 20 pounds like i think in 2015 and i lost 20 pounds in 2016 the reason that i stop is just because it's like god my energy levels are so down because of the food that i'm eating i'm not eating enough or you know my diet is basically eat less um so that that's something i want to get on top of um 
more personal goals to expand potentially myself a little bit more. And what I mean by that is do new things. Is that for the past few years, even with university, I have been kind of doing the same things over the last few years, doing the same hobbies. You know, again, League of Legends is the big one. That's not going to go away. But maybe pick up a new hobby, pick up something new. Um, that just kind of expands me, whether that's, you know, go-karting or paintball, something that's just new that will give me something extra to do. Um, I think that's pretty important because if you do the same things all the time, it becomes very repetitive and it's a bit boring. So picking up something new, I think, is going to be something that I want to do in 2017. Um, and then I guess, well, if we go into a YouTube goal, again, I'm pretty happy with how YouTube's going right now. I still, to this day, never expected the channel to get where it is. Um, so all I'll say is it's just to continue to grow. If the, the subscribers continue to go up, the views stay good and healthy then I'm pretty happy, you know, it's it's something that I love doing, I don't really take YouTube for granted, because I get to wake up every day and do this, like, that, that that's something that's weird, you know, I am obviously um, looking to my future, and maybe one day I'll have to go get, like I say, an office job, but I'm being, I'm pretty grateful and happy with what I'm doing now, and I want to make the most of it, um, so that's pretty much the resolution part, so goals, I'd say, just the, the big goals, is wait it's the biggest one that is 2017 that's the big goal of this year so future me when you're watching this in a year if you haven't lost the weight you're a bum but hopefully i i would have by then and um yeah just more personal ones you know go pick up a new hobby potentially or um and then continue growing the youtube channel that's pretty much it that's what i'm looking forward to do um now we get into the question part so before we actually get into answering questions i actually want to start by answering questions and what i mean by that is there were so many questions that were actually very similar and what i did say obviously in the climb to master video is that the people that i answer the question for you'll all be entered in winning the right points well the problem is is when so many people were asking the same question it's kind of hard to determine who gets entered or not so i'm just gonna answer these questions and nobody's gonna be entered from these questions because so many people ask the question and as i say you should come up with unique questions that nobody really no one else asks so the biggest this one uh, or most common was why did I start YouTube that type of thing I have said it before so I'll go over it quickly I had no intention of being a YouTuber I literally was doing YouTube right at the beginning because I was bored I was in a gap year between sixth form college and university and I had nothing to do so I just started making YouTube videos I watched people like Total Biscuit and Jesse Cox and their stories of how they started YouTube kind of inspired me just to do it for fun and that's what I'd say, is anybody who is watching this and who is thinking about getting into YouTube or might be a much smaller YouTuber and just is starting, don't even think about being a YouTuber. You know, I don't. I wouldn't even call yourself a YouTuber unless you have a considerable audience and, like, you're doing it really, like, proper. Because it's a thing that you should just do for fun. You know, I didn't even consider myself a YouTuber until probably about 50 or 60,000 subscribers, which is quite big considering the average size of a YouTuber. Um, so I just have fun with it. You know, it was no thing of this is going to be my job. I think if you go in with that mindset, you're probably going to fail because you just do it naturally. Just do what you'd normally do without thinking of your career or money or any of that stuff. Because that stuff, trust me, and I've seen it happen. I've nearly seen it happen to me is when money gets starts getting thrown into mix. It's very easy, let's say, to become corrupted. And, it, you know, you just do different content or you mention different things that you probably would never mention. And that's why with me now, with it being my job, sponsor content is obviously something that is very good for youtubers you know financial gain it's definitely there but i only take sponsors now that i'm like i believe in this product because i did maybe a year and a half ago did a sponsor or two things of sponsors and i was like eh, this maybe sh i shouldn't do this like type thing but you know you're just going to be careful with that basically so yeah i did it for boredom curing the boredom and then it just turned into something that i just had no idea would happen you know it became uh, you know, 100 subscribers happened quick and then a 1,000 came and then I was just like, oh, God. And then I d did it the whole way through university, which was very hard. And the next big question that people had was, do I have any basically regrets or any things that, like, have changed my life? Maybe for the worse while being a YouTuber. Um, it's a weird question, but I know a lot of people see the positive with YouTubers. YouTubers tend to go, look, I'm doing YouTube. It's amazing and really fun. Uh, but there are negatives, honestly. You know, I'm not going to hide away from the fact. Um, some people will not see these as negatives, really. But I, I kind of do. Is It's very isolated. That's the probably the biggest negative of being a YouTuber. You are isolated from people. Is that I'm in this 
room and sure it's not the most difficult job it's not the most you know it's not a very hard job i enjoy doing it but i'm in here hours upon hours and upon hours a day that i have to be to make content every single day two videos a day that's just a thing that i have to do and i'm not in an office i don't have a colleague that's in the next room i'm in my bedroom by myself and all my family go to work you know i'm alone um <clears throat> so that's probably the worst part of being a youtuber and with that if you want to add on the extra part is that it ruins your social life completely. I practically don't have one. Uh, I do talk to people every single day, but they are my online friends and they have great friends and I do treat them as my best friends. But it's a bit different that than, you know, going out and all that type of thing that a lot of people like to do. And it's something that I probably want to do. And that's why I said earlier, you know, one of my goals this year is to pick up a new hobby. It is to try and get that interaction in real life that I just probably need a little bit more of. Um, but there, there is a couple plans in 2017 um, that may help towards that, but I can't really talk about that right now. Um, and that, I think, okay, there was one more that was a little bit like blah, relationship status and all that stuff. Uh, single, and it's not really a priority of mine right now because of how busy I am. And that's the one thing, and I'd say a weakness of mine is that I am a workaholic when it comes to YouTube. I work seven days a week. I do not have a day off, and I'm happy with that. I enjoy doing this. It's what I want to do. And I kind of think, you know, I've got this chance to do something bigger or expand into different things eventually with my career from YouTube. And if I let up now and I kind of slack off, that could go away tomorrow. So, yeah, I don't. It's not a priority of mine. If it happens, great. But it's not a priority because of just how dedicated I am to doing YouTube. You know, for I think it was over a three month period, I literally uploaded two videos a day every single day. And that was, trust me, that was tough, um, surprisingly. But uh, that's pretty much it for the basic questions. There were only big three ones, but it was, I saw them asked all the time. And I was like, damn, a lot of people want to know that stuff. So now we'll get into questions that are a little bit more unique, let's say. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll get into it. So all these questions are either from League or personal or YouTube or school. There, there's a lot of different ways that people can kind of talk about it so the big one or next big one that people did have but i will say uh tear dracona asks do you plan on doing youtube as a career or do you want to do something else and do youtube as a hobby um i guess this ties in with another question people had and it's uh, you know how much do you make from youtube while i'm not going to say the specific number what i'll just say is doing this right now is a lot more financial rewarding that people would imagine um i earn I would say a lot of money considering the channel size that I have because of the content that I do. YouTube does favor longer watched videos. They are doing some stuff with the algorithm right now. But let's just say my channel is perfectly designed with like earning as much as you possibly can. And that was not intentional. I did not make my channel into a money making machine. My channel has always been long game commentaries. So that's just naturally what happened. And I was like, Oh, okay. Um, so YouTube as a career right now, it's just the obvious thing to do. You know, I, I was actually speaking to my uh, dad and sister about this the other day, and they were actually asking me, you know, what do I want to do? Do I want to go find a job that I'm pretty highly qualified for with my degree and stuff? Or am I going to do YouTube? And I kind of said to them, you know, because they're family, I was like, well, this is how much I'm making. And both of them were like, oh, um, it's not worth me looking for a job right now. You know, I am still looking occasionally if an, a dream, and if a dream job came up, I would maybe apply for it. But it's not something that I'm rushing to do. You know, YouTube at the moment is really rewarding, both like how I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying this more than I probably would an office job. And it's more financially rewarding. And I know a lot of people are going to be like, how financially rewarding? Again, I'm not going to go into the specific number, but all I say, I'm 22 years old and I am earning more than double than I would be in a normal job. You know, if I were to get a university graduate job, I'm earning more than double. And that's all I'll say about it. But that, that gives you an idea of me doing YouTube as a career. It, it would be too financially, I guess, devastating if I got a normal job because I'd lose over half of what I'm currently making. And obviously I can still do YouTube as a hobby eventually when I get my job, but it's obviously not going to be to the same scale. So if you combine my happiness with how happy I am doing YouTube and the financial bit, would you have to when it's your job? It's natural that I'm just going to keep doing YouTube as long as I'm having fun with it. And that's all I've said that all the time is like, sure, the money's great. But if I stop having fun with YouTube and if I wake up in the morning and go, oh, I really don't want to make a video today. And that may happen sometimes. But if that happens for like a week long period, I'm just like, I can't be bothered. Then maybe YouTube is it for me. And that is a possibility. So that's that's pretty much that answered. Um, next one. 
is um ba -ba -da -bam. Aaron Van Irven uh, asked the question, are you going to change anything about your channel and or series for 2017? Um, yes, I am. Um, so you, if you subscribe to Huzzy Games for live commentaries and stuff like that, you're still going to get that. You know, I'm not going to magically transform my channel into something it's not. You know, why would I do that? I enjoy doing commentaries. That's what I do. But something that I want to expand into, and I, I guess I'll announce it here because, you know, it doesn't matter if it's not a secret. Because um, some people are like, oh, keep it secret because other YouTubers can do it. It's when you hear it, it's obviously a little bit different. I want to do more, let's say, professional casting videos. And what I mean by that is if I can, I'm not entirely sure. I haven't looked into it that much. If I can get the replay file to LCS games... I want to do a series that I commentate over LCS games and it's not good. It will be educational, I guess, but it will be more of a commentary like you do watch LCS games because that is something that I might want to expand into is that I, do, I am a commentator on League of Legends and I never have really casted tournaments and stuff like that. And I think I could do that as my next step. And the, again, when you talk about career progression, what could you do from YouTube? That's maybe something that I could get into and I've got a good platform to launch myself off. Let's be honest. If I do one of these series that I commentate over LCS games as a proper commentary, I've got a great platform for criticism, for feedback, to let people go, okay, no, do that a little bit different, do that a little bit different, but I really like that part. And that's that's awesome. You know, that is something that I'd love to do. And obviously, if you're talking way down in the future with doing this series, is Riot is always, and I do mean always, uh recruiting new casters for the especially the european lcs and who knows if i get good enough i'm definitely not good enough now it's no point me replying now because i'm a live commentator of my own play i am not a commentator of like games pre-done games and that's something that i'm going to need to practice a lot but if i get good at it and I'm, if i'm confident with my own commentary then maybe i'll apply and who knows you know anything is possible let's be honest most of the commentators that are in the na and uh, eu lcs are people with experience or with audiences or like past pros there's i think there is may was there a, there might be a youtuber eventually but i'm not sure if there's like a fully fledged youtuber that's made that transformation but that's maybe what i'm going to be aiming for so that is one big thing with the channel that I'm going to be doing is that new series of actual proper commentated games. Um, so hopefully you guys would enjoy that. I'm not entirely sure if people are going to be like, yeah, this is cool, but it's just something that I want to do. Even if it's a video that it doesn't get as many views, it will help me develop my casting skill. So there you go. Uh, next one is... Uh, by Omri Lavi, what do I think about the new Anivia? I'll, I'll honestly say I've only played it once and I was just like, eh, why would I play this anymore? It's not the Anivia that I personally really enjoy. To me, Anivia was a champion that had high burst, but was very fluent in her play that you could do nice combos and very quickly. You can't really do that with the new Anivia. You know, in order to get the E damage, you need, even need to stun with a Q, which can take time. Or you need a fully stacked ultimate. Like, that takes so long. Like, Anivia is not that quick burst champion that she used to be that I used to really love playing. So I personally just don't really enjoy playing it. So that's why she didn't make my champion pool. Um, next one is... Uh, it's very hard to pronounce, but it's like Etta Ohei Bayakra. Sure. Um... So, Huzzy, what's my opinion on Echo? In Season 5, you said he was a mid laner you were falling in love with. What happened, and is he not anymore? Also, in general, opinion on the champion. Um, A lot happened to Echo that was not through my control. You know, he was a mid laner upon release, but then he very quickly, and in 2016, uh, for a big part of it, became a tank. You know, he was a tank top laner. Um, and, uh, you know, in, what, what I'd say about Echo right now is he's a confused champion. He's like the old Gangplank. When you pick, when you think of Echo right now, you think, where do I play this champion? Do I play him as a mid laner? Do I play him as a tank laner or top lane tank still? He's a little bit confused and I don't think he has like a pre, like this is what he should be doing. Um, and for me, again, like I always say, why would you play this champion when there's this champion that's better? Unless you just really enjoy that champion. And I do not enjoy Echo more than Lux or more than you know zigs like I, I don't so there's no reason for me to pick him up when i think his role is still a little bit like i don't know if he's a mid laner at the moment so that's pretty much the reason i do enjoy the champion though i i like his mechanics i like the whole time travel four seconds reverse thing i think his mechanics and how his kit works is very nice to the champion and it works well um but yeah i i just think he's 
in a bit of a weird place right now. And maybe when LCS comes back in the next few weeks, maybe someone will play Echo and go, oh, that's how you're supposed to play him right now. So that's what I find LCS really good for, is to kind of show people, this is a champion, this is how you play the champion. So there you go. Uh, next one is... Um, how much money have I spent on League and will I see more uh, leasing in Road to Masters? Uh, so how much money have I spent on League? Uh, over £4,000. Um, so for you Americans, that will be about $5,500. Um, what I'll say is a lot of people are going to go, what? Um, that's over the course of seven, eight years. However, I, it's still confusing how long I've played this game. Uh, I don't know if I can do an account lookup of like when I made the account, but I think it was like early 2010. Um, you know, League came out in 2009, but its official first season was 2010. Um, so I played this game for now seven years, considering it's 2017, and uh, I have multiple accounts. So my main account, Huzzy, owns a lot of the skins in League of Legends, but my Smurfs as well, they own a lot too. I've got three accounts that own every single champion in the game that isn't through IP. A lot of that is through Riot Point or skins and stuff like this. And what I'd say to it is that obviously, yeah, I've spent quite a lot of money in this game, but I've made more back than what I've spent. You know, it's to me, it's an investment more than anything else. Like, example, my Admiral Banter account is now the A to Z account that I'm doing that series on. To me, that was an investment, putting about £500 on that account to buy every single champion because I was like, I need every single champion to do this series. So... That's the way that I think, and also it's a weird thing. But trust me, as a YouTuber, people people generally prefer watching gameplays when they people are playing a skin, uh, because people don't have skins. You know, not every majority of players do not own skins, um, so they always like to see skins. Uh, and as for Lee Sin in Road to Masters, uh, yeah, but I think I mentioned it in a recent commentary. Lee Sin, for me personally, he's one of my favorite champions in the game. But he's also a mood champion. You play him if you're in the mood to play him. And right now, it's not a big deal to me. So I'm not playing him as much as I probably normally would. But I'm sure like there will be a point that I get obsessed with him again. I just play him like all the time. So yeah, he'll definitely be in the Master Series. But just not right now. Uh, next one is... Let me just take a drink before... Um... This is from Col Iterals. Um, what are the three best skins in League of Legends and what makes an amazing skin in your mind? I don't think I'm going to be able to like say my three. I'll give it a go. Like Elemental is Lux, honestly, straight up there with one of my favorite skins. I love Lux as a champion, have done for years, but then just the way that it's done is that you can pick different elements and actually feel a little bit unique. You know, there are eight or so different forms that you don't necessarily have to pick, if you know what I mean. Like, if you love the fire form, you don't need to upgrade to something else. You could just stay in fire, or you could stay in water, or you could then go into dark or molten or whatever. There's a lot of customization, and as somebody that loves to play Lux, it's nice to feel refreshed every single time you play that champion. You know, there are people that have played the same champion for five years and used the same skin for five years. That must get a l pretty boring. But Lux, with that one elemental skin, you can change every single game and look different. So that, to me, is really, really good. Uh, next skin that I really like, honestly, it's a bit of a boring one compared to the elemental Lux, but Muay Thai Lee Sin. I just really like it. I, I, I can't really put why. I just think it kind of suits the champion. I prefer the animations that he has with that skin over the base Lee Sin. Um, and yeah, no, I just really like Muay Thai Lee Sin. And then the final one. Ooh, what would it be? Um, if I look at my champion pool, that probably will help. So I do like the Zerath one, the sand one, but I guess that wouldn't be one of my favorites. Oh, okay, I got it. The um, the Ziggs one that he's like a mage, the alchemist, whatever it is, Ziggs. I think that's really cool. I think it goes to the champion really nicely. Like obviously, yeah, Ziggs is this bomb champion. But Ziggs being like a mage in that, I think it goes really, really well. And it suits the character. It looks pretty damn cool. And yeah, I'd probably say that one. I'm not sure if that was in my top three. Because again, I'm thinking off the top of my head. But they're definitely three of my favorites. And then what makes an amazing skin in my mind? Um, it adds to the character. Or it can give you uniqueness. So to me... Uh, Alchemist Ziggs, it just fits the character perfectly. Muay Thai Lee Sin does the same thing. And then Lux gives you uniqueness that you can change. So those are the two things that I kind of look for in skins that I can kind of be different. That's why when Pulsefire Ezreal came out, 
I really like that skin as well because I was like, I actually feel unique while playing this because I changed throughout the game. Um, so no, that's kind of what I find good in a skin is when you can feel a little bit different. And I guess, you know, people complain about skin chromas all the time, but they're kind of good for doing that. If you have your favorite champion, but you're like, oh, I look the same than every other person that plays as champion. Most people, one, are not going to have a skin, but secondly, they're not even going to use a chroma. So if there's a chroma for a champion you play, then it actually adds to that uniqueness. It makes you look a little bit different than most people. So that's kind of what I'd find good in a skin. Uh, next question is from RQ Gaming. Uh, hey, Huzzy, what is your favorite meal? Ooh, um, it's a hard one considering I do like food. I, I, I presume that's not hard to tell. Um, if I had to be like, if I'm on death row and I'm like, right, I get to put in my order for what's my final meal. God, what would I say? Like, I, honestly, and I know this sounds very British, but a fry up, my like, my especially my grandma's fry up is like the best thing ever. And if you don't know what a fry up is, it's like fried bread with an egg on it with beans, sausages, bacon, and stuff like that. Like that, that is really good. And if you're British, you'll understand. But I probably wouldn't ask for that because it's a bit basic. Um, I love Mexican food. I love Chinese food. I like Indian food. God, this is hard. Um, hmm. What would I have? I'd probably go... There's, um, I used to go to a place in France and I can't exactly remember what the dish is called, but I remember what it was. Um, I, like, I don't remember the name, but it's a pork dish that it was like a just circle pork thing in like a white wine sauce and just very thin ch fries or thin ch uh, chips. That to me was just like, Mwah. as a kid growing up, we went to France quite a lot. I used to just, every single time I ordered that every single year. I'd literally get the plate clean. Like, I, they would not even have to clean the plate in the kitchen. I cleaned it for them with my tongue. It was that good. So, I'd probably go with that. Again, I don't know the name of it. I guess pork with white wine sauce. But it was something... It was weird. Like, it wasn't, like, just a normal pork with white wine sauce. It was something a bit extra. But it's, it was so good. Um, so, next thing... Uh, or next question, anyway. Um, by... Again, it's hard to pronounce, like, Russian names. Um, X Pranonotic, something like that. Uh, do you believe being a YouTuber is a job to be proud of? Uh, yeah, to a certain extent. I'd say most jobs are something to be proud of in, in a way. You know, if you are a person that's living on Earth in 2017 and you're making your way and you're, you're earning money and working your way up the ladder, you should be proud of that. And, you know, YouTube, let's be honest, is that, you know, I may not necessarily be the, a massive YouTuber considering the people that are, but I'm still in the top, like, tiny percentage of people that are actually able to do this for a job. And I get to do something that I enjoy every single day. I get to go to events and people come up to me and are literally shaking while having a photo. So I'd say it is, it's a, it's a proud thing to be as a YouTuber. Um, but I'd say when you are a YouTuber, you have to be very careful with not letting it go to your head. Uh, because you're still a normal guy. I'm still a normal guy. I walk around Cambridge, my local town or local city. Um, and I'm a normal guy. Nobody stops me. I'm just walking, normal person. And that's, I enjoy that. You know, I still would not imagine what it would be like to be someone like um, Denzel Washington or Jamie Foxx or, or Leonardo DiCaprio. Because that would be very hard to live your life when you're that famous. So being a YouTuber, I'd say, is the best of both worlds for a lot of people. And um, no, I'm very proud of what I've accomplished already. And I'm hoping to accomplish more. And some people say, oh, do you find it weird if you're ever having a conversation with a stranger? And they go, oh, what do you do? And you go, YouTuber? Yeah, it's a bit weird. Um, I may word it a bit differently. You know, I probably should say YouTuber, but I just say video editor. Because when when you say YouTuber, even in 2017 or 2016, people are like, really? Um, when you say video editor, they kind of just think, oh, okay, so you're like a professional video editor. Which is still true, but it's just kind of like a little bit more of a professional title, if you will. So, no, I, I am proud that I'm a YouTuber. So, there you go. Um... Someone, okay, this was a random question. I, I did answer like a relationship one earlier, but I, this one's a bit weird and funny. By Unknown Soldier, are you married? And if no, if you got married, is it going to affect your daily uploads or channel activity? That's a weird question. Um, I, I No, no, I'm not married. Um, To be married, you probably have to be with somebody. And right now I'm not. So I only answered this because it was just like, that's odd um i guess this guy just wanted the the award for the unique questions so what i'd say relationship wise i've got friends that are youtubers in relationships and i'll say with them does it do does it let them affect their relationship or their um does it let 
does the relationship let the YouTube channel get affected? Honestly, not really. Because, and again, this is a trick if you're a YouTuber that you have to look out for, is generally you want to go with a relationship if you're a YouTuber with somebody that understands YouTube and understands this world. Because if they don't, I would imagine that would create so many arguments. Um, but if they understand what a YouTuber is being about, then they'd get it and they'd be like, okay, yeah, no, he has to put a lot of time into it. So that's what I'd probably say. Um, any YouTubers out there, be careful. <laughs> so, yeah. Um... Next one uh, is from Tally's uh, Dairy, or Dairy of Life. Um, for the Q&A, as you have a degree in it, uh, do you plan to develop and publish a game sometime? If so, what type of game would it be? Uh, not really, no. So if you're unaware, I did a degree in computer game design. Um, I got the highest grade you possibly can get in it, which again, I'm quite proud of. Um, but doing that degree, it made me realize I do not want to be a game developer. Sure, I want to work in the game industry, and I'm sure eventually I will, but I would want to work more in, say, like the community, um, the community side, or marketing, or, you know, casting and stuff like that. I would not want to be coding. You know, I had to code in that degree quite a lot, and it just isn't for me. I don't enjoy coding. I didn't you know, it, it just was a bit boring. Um, so I've got the degree and it will help me obviously secure a job because having a degree is a nice thing. Go, OK, you can learn to that. You know, basically, if you don't understand what having higher education means to an employer, it means you're committed. And it also means that you can actually learn to that level. So it's like, oh, you actually can learn to having a first standard in university. Oh, you can easily do the job that I'm advertising for. That's what it does. And I'd recommend everybody to go as high education as you possibly can because it helps quite a lot there will be people that obviously do well com or completely fine without a degree that's obviously going to happen but if you do want to give yourself and i say it in league of legends don't put yourself at any unnecessary disadvantages give yourself advantages and one of those is higher education um but no i doubt i'll do a game i might help you know i know some of my friends might be doing some indie games i may help them a bit maybe i'll put it on this channel and do a video on it to help market it uh who knows but i doubt i'll actually become a game designer again um next one is um which was my favorite or by d radical or radial uh which was my favorite season of league uh season three one, because, or a big reason was because it was before university, so I could put a lot of time into League, and that's obviously where my highest rating was. My highest rating I ever got was like Diamond 1, 60-ish LP, but back then, because Challenger was just introduced, most pro players were not even Challenger because they were too focused on scrimming and stuff, but when they played Solo Queue, they were Diamond 1. Season 3 was the season that I played against all the pros. That I played against Froggen or x Peke, And I was holding my own. You know, again, that was when I was arguably the best player that I was back then. And I will say, some people will get confused with this statement. But if I were to play myself... If Season 7 Huzzy... So me right now were to play Season 3 Huzzy... I would beat the old Huzzy hands down. Uh, because everybody in the league gets better. The problem with me is that the league community has got better, and I've got better, but just not as quick as the league community. So that's why I haven't stayed in Diamond 1. Hopefully hopefully this season will change that, because I'm going to put a lot of time in just playing the game again. Um, next question is from uh, Gaming Dragon. Were you athletic as a kid? Uh, yeah, incredibly, believe it or not. And I know a lot of people, they judge a book by its cover and go, God, you, you must not be athletic or at all. Uh, but no, I was stupidly athletic. I, I was A-League football champion, uh, played rugby. I did athletics to county level. Uh, like crazy i did everything i was i was a not a one-trick pony in sport i literally played everything and i actually regret that partially uh, my sister she did heavily invest into one sport and she got to national level in it and i probably could have done that with several sports but i didn't want to just play one sport i had to play most of them um so you know it's a small regret of mine because i could have probably been national level in a few um but no i was stupidly athletic uh, as a kid and if you're wondering what happened uh, i had a thing in my knees called oshkud schlatter a disease it's not really a disease but basically it's the bone cartilage in your knee not growing quick enough comparing to the rest of your body so your knees cannot deal with the weight they can't deal with running or sprinting as well as they used to and i used to be in agony it got to the stage that i barely could walk around on monday morning after a football game on sunday 
and um, that that's kind of what killed me playing sport and instead you know I was an idiot and I'll say to you guys if you are going to stop playing sport still do something and even though I probably couldn't have run for a while with my knees recovering because I damaged them quite badly with still doing sport with Oscar Chlata I should have started to swim like I could have swam and then I wouldn't have put any weight on but I did nothing and then I got lazy and I just played more computer games instead of doing some physical activity and that is one of the biggest regrets I have in my life I don't have many because I'm always looking to the future not the past but putting on the weight by being lazy is definitely probably the biggest regret of my life so far but that will change this year uh, next question we're only going to answer maybe a few more um, because my throat is starting to dry out um, but the next question is by mark Huzzy, do you think some skins actually give an advantage because uh, because some skins make you smaller and so on um they don't if you want to get into the technical side of it, no skin alters the hitbox of a champion in the game of League of Legends. So, it, no, they, they never make you smaller. Um, there's an argument in some places, I will say, that when... there's a, The biggest example I can give of a skin giving an advantage is Kale. Uh, the champion Kale, when, she, uh, when her skin called Aether Wing Kale got released, it's a legendary skin, it's a very nice skin still to this day, when that skin got released, there was a big question of, will, you know, does this skin give an advantage? And the answer is yes, it did. The reason for it is with that skin came a brand new auto attack animation. The old Kale was very like staccato and she just swang, but the new Aether Wing was very smooth in how she auto attacked. It made so much of a difference with last hitting with E. It was ridiculous. And that definitely gave an advantage. So much so that they updated Kale's auto attack animation, the whole champion, to have the same auto attack animation as the skin. So yeah, there is an argument for it. Um, but I will say, not as much as people think. I'd say, you know, the, recently there's been the whole Lux one, the Elementalist Lux, so I can't see the ability. I'm very colorblind. Like, I'm probably more colorblind than most colorblind people because I can't tell the difference between, like, red and green half the time. And I do not have a single problem with that skin. And I know colorblindness is different to different people, but if anybody were to get affected, it would probably be me. And those abilities of Elements of Luck, Elements of Luck they're so flashy and big and crazy looking that they're more than the base skin. So if you have a problem with Elementalist Lux, you must have a problem with the base skin as well. Um, which means that the skin doesn't give an advantage. It's just the champion that's a little bit awkward. So I'd say not really, but there have been certain times in history that it's happened in League, but Riot has been pretty quick to fix it. That they begin, okay, we'll fix it. Okay, we'll adjust this. It happens all the time. You know, you can see a new skin get released and then the next patch, there is a fix to make something more visible or change. Or So it's, it's not really a big deal. Um, next question is... Um... Uh, is it true, this is from Walt van der R, is it true that YouTubers only earn money if people watch on PC? If so, I'll start watching your vids on my PC. Uh, no, that's not true. Um, people don't, well, Adblock obviously is the biggest disruption of people making money on YouTube. My income is halved, I'd say. Um, from people using Adblock, which is obviously a, a big bummer. If someone said to you, this is how much you should be making, but I'm going to take half away just because I can, you'll get annoyed. And yeah, Adblock is annoying, but I'll be honest with you guys, I use Adblock. Like, I'm not going to pretend I don't. The only thing that I do is I whitelist. You can, on, on Adblock itself, you can whitelist YouTubers. There is a feature to do that, and that's what I do. You know, I whitelist the Yogscast channels, Hat Films, uh, Jesse Cox, Total Biscuit. I whitelist channels that I personally enjoy because I'm like, I don't want these guys to like not make money because if they don't make money, they can't do YouTube anymore and then I'll miss out on their content. So I'd say if you really enjoy, enjoy my content, maybe whitelist me on Adblock, but it's fine watching me on mobile. Is it, that's yeah that's not that's a non-issue most people watch youtube on mobile nowadays it seems so yeah no you you youtubers still earn from people on mobile uh next question uh what does my family think of my youtube career this is by matthew gruber um they're cool with it to a certain degree um you know they still they, they kind of get it more than they used to but it's still like uh one of those moments that it's like okay you know i'm recording everybody can't you know shout or like 
be normal i guess in the house because if they walk by and say something really loud it's obviously going to disrupt my recording so they're happy with it they you know they're very impressed of how much i make and all that it's good for my career but it's to, it's, it's it's an annoyance that you know that's kind of why i want to move out is because i could have a good relationship with my family while not disturbing them with doing youtube um but no, they're, they're, they're pretty proud with it. They find it amazing that, you know, I get over a million views a month and all that type of thing. Because it, it's cool. It's weird. Um, but no, they're, they're pretty proud. Um, but yeah. Um, next question is, does watching videos help you climb better? Uh, yeah, I'd say so. Obviously, yeah, I might be slightly biased to being an educational law YouTuber. But the best example I can use is myself. Is that I didn't watch YouTubers back in the day because they didn't really exist back in season three. Uh, or season two, season three, when I was first climbing, uh, there weren't that many, or I just didn't look for them. But I watched streamers back then, which is, guess, the equivalent, and I watched two streamers. I watched Ocelot and Guardsman and Bob, and I learned the game from those guys, and I figured out what I was doing bad from watching them, and I improved. And that's what I'd say you can do with my videos, or any videos, is you can see the differences and go, God, this this Huzz guy's making a lot of mistakes. True, but I'm still Diamond. And if you notice of how I get to Diamond every season, that might help quite a lot. So that's probably what I'd say. So yeah, I do definitely think it helps. Um, next couple, I think we'll answer three more. Um, when does Unranked to Diamond start? Love that series, can't wait. By Josip uh, Simunovic. Um, probably not till a couple months time. I don't want to rush it. I've got two big series happening at the moment with Climb to Master and A to Z. Um, uh, yeah, I don't see it starting before one of those is finished. You know, I would probably want to finish A to Z before Unranked to Diamond came. Or I want to finish Climb to Master before Unranked to Diamond came. Um, but obviously, yeah, it's my, it's my biggest series that I do every single season. So it will be coming, you know, again, if ever I see a dip in my YouTube channel and, it, you know, Climb to Master or A to Z suddenly becomes not very popular. Yeah, I've got Unranked to Diamond in my back pocket. That is like what my channel is built off. So I can kind of go, Unranked to Diamond starting everybody. And then everybody will be like, whoa, it's come back. Because that's what my channel is known for. I am an Unranked to Diamond channel. So it will be coming back. But I'd probably, you know, if I had to give an estimation, I'd probably say March or April. You know, I, 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 you know, two months odd, I'd say roughly. Um, so there you go. Uh, next question. I can't remember if I've answered two or three, but we'll do two more. Um, from now is what do you do if you feel your skills are no longer improving? Uh, it's a good question because I've actually had to deal with this myself. Um, get a notepad is my biggest, biggest recommendation, and just make notes after every single game of what you personally have done bad um if you die how did you die did you die because you had no vision did you die because you overextended just make a note of every single game you play and you do it for a week you don't have to do it all the time um and just kind of see if there's a pattern or something that you're always doing bad and just actively work on improving it most people play this game without even thinking what they need to get better at so if you do that and if you kind of go i need to get better at this and you're working towards improving it then suddenly you're getting better. Suddenly you then are improving. So that will probably help. And the last question that we're going to answer for the 2016 or 2017, sorry, uh, beginning is... Um, oh, that's an interesting one. Uh, do you sometimes forget that you don't wear glasses and check your eyes if you're wearing them or not? So again, this is from Ahmed uh, K. Hamdam or Hamdan. Uh, yeah, I do it all the time. Uh, I had laser eye surgery just over a month ago now. And I can guarantee you basically every single time I go to bed, I do this. I'm lying on my pillow ready to fall asleep, close my eyes thinking, okay, time for bed because I watch stuff in bed before I go to sleep. And I do this every single time I go, all right, time for bed. Wait, I'm not wearing glasses. Or if I go into the shower, uh, I'll get ready to go in the shower, get ready to walk in, take off the glasses. Wait, I'm not wearing glasses. It happens all the time. And it's going to take ages for me to adjust. Like literally, I wore glasses for majority of my life. So it's going to be very hard for my brain to suddenly go, you shouldn't look for your glasses anymore. You don't have them. So it's weird, but laser eye surgery is one of the best things I've ever done in my life. And I'm so happy with uh, the results so far. And again, I had my, um, just a quick tangent before we end. I had a um, sight test the other day the like month after you have it you get a test my eyes together like when they're together are 2020 individually though my eyes are still healing 
Um, so individually, my eyes aren't 2020 yet, but when they both get individually to 2020, my vision is going to be amazing. Like, it's amazing right now. Like, it's, it's crazy that I can see everything on this computer screen or can see, if, you know, if there's a car in front of me, I can see their license plate. It's amazing. Um... So yeah, it's definitely one of the best things I've done in my life. But that's going to be it for today's Q&A video. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. And all I'll say to end it is if you haven't subscribed, uh, please do like this video. But as a big thing is hopefully you'll have a good 2017. In the comment section below, what are you hoping for 2017? Let me know. And the cool thing with doing this is that I think I did it last year. Is that if you guys did it last year, you remember watching my old resolution video last year. Go back on that video and see if you can find your own comment. See if you've done your resolution. But then also comment on this video. And then next year, you can come back to this video and see if you've done your goals. So that's the kind of cool thing. It's like a time sync thing. Um, so that's going to be it. So yeah, leave your comments down below. I'll read through them. But it's also for you guys to come back in a year and kind of see if you did them. Uh, like it, subscribe. See you guys next time. See ya.